Okay, all right, we're recording now. So, uh, welcome to the first podcast. Uh, I guess we don't really have a name for it yet, do we? No, we don't. But like, maybe that's part of the the appeal is because we're two normal guys, two <laughs> normal gamers, just talking, just talking about games. Precisely. So, uh, yeah, we're going to talk about just what we've been playing lately. Uh, po- probably go over some of the more interesting news in the uh, gaming world at the moment. And whatever else that sort of comes into our head as we go along. Uh, it's not scripted or anything, we're just going to make it up and see what happens. So what have you been playing, man? Well, I have been playing a mixture of things, trying most of the games I missed this year, like Assassin's Creed 3 and Far Cry 3, I have to say. Pretty underwhelmed by all of that. I, I don't know what you thought of those games. Uh, well, let's, let's start with Assassin's Creed, shall we? Yes. Well, tell me, why, why were you... I was completely... I thought it was terrible, personally. So I just, I just felt that... I agree on most whole... points. The promise of the game was that it was an open, free, far more involving experience than the previous games, and a more complex combat system, but that none of that actually happened. It was the same combat system. It was still dudes lining up to get killed, and and I just it didn't didn't come together. Like with the rest of Assassin's Creed games, I had all these little mini games and little quests that just kind of bogged down the whole game. I thought I couldn't agree more. Honestly, uh, I thought. I thought basically it was so overly saturated with unnecessary stuff that it really ruined the experience for me. Yeah, well, I haven't been gotten very far into it. That's how underwhelmed I was. Yeah, I uh, just... They basically took, like, the I'd say from the second game, Brotherhood, Revelations, they had this had it down perfectly. I'd say they had their system and it worked really, really well. And I think what killed it in this one is that it's far more open yeah. and they've tried to fill this big open space but at the end of the day you're just going from A to B and there's nothing really there and I don't really feel connected to the world either although I will say that the naval battles are a definite highlight and should have been their own game really? <laughs> yeah they're pretty insanely good I they didn't that, that right. so I feel like I, I've missed out now. You should try that out. I, can... I am planning to finish it. You know, I can't. I can't not. But uh, it is yet to to Appeal grab to you. Me. Yeah, no, that's understandable. It's just a bit disappointing all round. I mean, it was quite overhyped. I think. Well, well actually, I've read a lot of good reviews for it as well, and I know a lot of people that like it. But it was just buggy as hell, and just didn't really feel like an Assassin's Creed game. No, agreed. It did not. It did not. Now, Far Cry 3. Now, yes. this to me is, is a very interesting game because, as you already know, I am not really a fan of the Far Cry series. I've felt continually disappointed by them. So I really wasn't on board for this one, but everyone has been telling me to get it. Everyone. Uh, I've been saying, oh, it's really good, blah, blah, blah. And I finally played it, and I, I've got to say, I don't understand the appeal. I, it Do wasn't a terrible game. It wasn't, I didn't find, there's nothing bad about it. I just wasn't grabbed either. I think the story's kind of lacklustre, because it's just... Exactly. It's very generic, well... Hmm, it's a bit hmm. ridiculous. It's, it is it's a little bit, yeah. It's a game, like it's typical, oh, I'm a nobody. So but I will say that it's murderer. the best Far Cry game I've played since the first oh, one. Yeah, like, hands down, hands yeah. down. The, the gameplay itself is great, and I really enjoyed yeah. playing the game, but the story didn't grab me. And the AI to me is terrible. Like you know, yeah, encourages AI is the really stealth bad. gameplay, and then one you shoot a guy, and then everyone just knows where you are, and it's that frustrated me. It's not too bad when you have silenced weapons or the bow, I guess. But uh, yeah, it's just you know, like most open world shooters, you know, I'd never expect much from them. I just expect a fun time. But that's the thing. I, I spent I, most I, of that I game did. on fire, to be honest. <laughs> on fire yeah there's one bit where um, I had like my selection of weapons that I really wanted and I was yeah. enjoying those weapons and the, there's one mission where he asks spoilers where oh, I'll do yeah where um, he, you're asked to go and burn down all the uh, weed crops or whatever and he he was like here take this flamethrower and I was like I don't need this flamethrower I got my <laughs> guns right so I get there and I'm like shit I don't have anything to burn these things down with so I'm flinging molotovs everywhere and trying to find explosive barrels and it took me like twice the amount of time it should have done this mission and I basically went from not being on fire to being on fire and that process just repeated for about an hour so pretty similar time to Fallout New Vegas when you cooked yourself in that vault oh yeah that too god I miss New Vegas 
Do you? Do you want to go play it again? Uh, well, I've beaten it. I've done everything in it, so I don't want to play it. But I'd like the I like a new Fallout game. In other words, is what I'm trying oh, to say. Oh yeah, I definitely Fallout Four. That, that my penis is ready for that. <laughs> that's, that's lovely. Uh, but back to Far Cry Three. I enjoyed the hunting. That was fun. Um, no, I have to say that was that was fun. But I mean, I, I guess you know it's a bit of a lazy comparison. But oh, so you haven't feel... finished? I don't think. Have you finished it yet? No, 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 not even nearly. There's one mission at the end that totally redeemed it in my light, in my opinion, and I enjoyed it thoroughly. And I was just like, well, I've had a fun time romping around this island. Well, that, that's basically. But that's I, yeah. I play it like I played Just Cause Two, and I've got nothing else. I just want to run around, and shoot randomly. Yeah, pretty much. It's not. I wouldn't say the story was that great. It was a bit. Also, the main character I found was the most unlikable douche ever. He was a bit of a fab boy, wasn't he? Yeah. I just no. I really didn't like the main character at all. I felt so sorry for his girlfriend that she had to put up with that. To be honest, oh, dude, I was not paying attention <laughs> to the story. Oh man. Uh, so tell me about Firefall, man. Firefall. Okay. Well, uh, Firefall. To me, what is is so fascinating about Firefall is that, that Firefall and Planet Side Two may have been my games of of the last year, like of the last literally over the last 2012. And over this month, I have not really been wowed by anything apart from these two games. And both of them are free to play. Now, I don't know, you know, maybe it's the future, maybe it's not. All I can say is that these games are, are incredible. And just so, it's just fun. That's what I miss. Remember when you used to play a game as a kid, and you'd sit down and it wasn't about achievements, it wasn't about leveling, it wasn't, you didn't think about it, you, you just enjoyed playing. Yeah. And I, I, I feel like a lot of games miss that, and Firefall to me. Planet Side 2 has got a long way to come, in my opinion, but Firefall has already really impressed me. I mean, the shooting mechanics is a bit buggy in places, but apart from that, I've had no no problem whatsoever. The levelling system is genius. The the crafting system is fantastic. I mean, that's just addictive. Um, and, yeah, the fact it's only going to get bigger from now, you know, that's that excites me. Oh, well, that sounds pretty good, I guess. What's uh, what is the gameplay like? What's you know, what do you do? I, d- I haven't played any of this, so. Imagine Borderlands, but as an MMO. That is how I see it. It's you, you run around. It's let not not the loot as much. I'm talking more the co-op RPG shootings. Okay. You know, you've you've got um, bandit enemies, and you've got animal-like enemies, and you've got um. There's this whole lore about this melding event where there's these like twisted creatures and you fight those as well and it sort of centers around going out and finding resources with these things called thumpers which attract like all sorts of business and uh, you kind of you go out into the wilderness, you find a good mining spot, you drop it and then waves of enemies will attack and you have to defend it off and it doesn't sound like much but in a group of five people it, it it's just that's good fun. And bonus because I got the founders package you get a bike and it looks like the bike from Dark Knight so <laughs> I get Sounds to be the good. knight you are the hero that that planet deserves I feel like I should know what it's called I can't remember it's like I know there's mini... a place called Copacabana <laughs> uh, I don't know I wouldn't know because I haven't played it well I I'm recommend afraid. it um, you'll have to join me on it soon let's have a look yeah but uh, what have you been playing, my friend? Oh, a lot of old uh, old games, actually, late recently. Um, I finished my pile of current games, so like Hitman, Far Cry, and all that. So I'd say the last week I I replayed through the entire Metal Gear series recently, which is always a fun romp of confusion. <laughs> of Japanese confusion. <laughs> no, love it. Great games all around. Um, I replayed, I played through the Silent Hill HD collection. Oh, lovely! Oh, that that the second man, game. Tears, tears. Oh, it always makes me well up a bit. The second game, so oh, good though. It's so good. Just oh, think about it now. I'm actually tearing up a little bit inside. I so I'm gonna, I'm gonna I've not talk it. about that too much. <laughs> <laughs> I'll hold you closer. For <laughs> you. Okay. But interestingly though, um, before I played it, I was looking at uh, looking at it online to see just what the quality of the HD version was. Oh, it's fantastic! It's, it's, the textures and all that are really nice, but man, there are some f- frame issues here and there. Really? And I'm pretty sure the Xbox 360 version is 
just broken because oh, they yeah. used to patch it. I've, I've, I've heard rumours about that. But what I found interesting is they've the Silent Hill 2 in that is actually an extended version. It's got it's additional the, um, material. It's the Xbox version. Yeah. Like, well, they released on the original Xbox. And so this so you... uh, Born from a Wish extra bit, which is where you play as Maria. Yes. Which I, I didn't play that bit because yeah. I just couldn't be it, asked by It's the okay, end, but... you know, it's a bit of extra story. It's not essential, in my opinion. What, yeah. what I find, though, is to me, oh, what it offers is, is the is scariest what... part in the whole game is a moment in the hotel. You're walking through and nothing happens. That's It's genius. You walk past the door and you just hear like a woman crying just very quickly, and that's it. And yeah, there was poo everywhere. <laughs> and Dave Bridges later. just couldn't handle it. No, they could not. <laughs> What I was going to say was, um, I was actually surprised at how short they are. I remember them being like quite long games, and I finished two in four hours, and I finished three in under three hours, and even got a little, a and lot. even got a trophy for that one. Remember how long you spent in Silent Hill the first time you played it, running aimlessly down the streets trying to find the where the hell you're supposed to go. So you must have, you, you, like, I, I know I personally spent about five hours running around the streets trying to. Yeah, find absolutely. It. This time it was. Uh... Whereas you know, you know, oh yeah, I need to pop here to the apartments, blah blah blah, and do all that. Precisely. Yeah, so that's been pretty good. I also I picked up the Killzone HD re-release. On the PlayStation Network. Killzone 1, one of my favourite shooters of all time. Actually, when it came out, I thought it was pretty fucking terrible. Really? And it, and it look, it's still like, looking at things like, um, the original Red Faction, Red Faction yeah. 2, and other, other shooters on the PlayStation 2, it looks pretty bad, Killzone. Yeah. But I enjoyed, I enjoyed playing it. The, um, what stood out to me most on this was the audio. The audio was really nice. Like the sounds of the guns and stuff like that. That was pretty cool. But again, you know, I played through it, it didn't take very long, and it was pretty bland. And it made me think that, like, the sequel is such a jump up. It's just, in all ways, just like a sequel should be, so. Killzone 2? Yeah. Now see, I never played Killzone 2, and when Killzone 1 came out, it did get a very mixed reception. Mm. I mean, a lot of people praised it, because I think it was, you know, PlayStation's first real offering as a shooter experience, you know, their version of a Halo. Well, it was game. Sony's, um, Supposed Halo killer, right? Yeah, I mean, obviously that never happened. No, but, you know, Killzone One to me was a really good game. I thought it was, you know, it reminded me of the first Red Faction, not the first one, sorry, the second one. You know that 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 kind of game that you know you felt like that, that a lot more could have been done in the game. Oh yeah, absolutely. But I, I still really enjoyed my time. You know, hmm. indeed. Okay, friend, I'm just gonna pause it there. All right, just for. A Okay, uh, what else have I been playing? Um, obviously, oh, I'm getting spotted. Whoops. Um, obviously I've been playing copious amounts of Battlefield 3 ever since it came out. You have. You are addicted to that game. Oh, it's so good, man. It is an excellent game. I can't fault it. Well, I mean, I can, <laughs> but not as much as I want to. Yeah, uh, I had... Well, I'm on, I'm, what am I now? Uh, Colonel 82 now? So I'm nearly there, man. That's... That's impressive, I have to say. Yeah. No, definitely enjoyed it. But most uh, bang for my buck, definitely, in the last year. Oh, I, I have to say that. Almost anyone who bought premium. I mean, the amount of content in those DLCs is staggering. So good. Yeah. I really enjoyed Battlefield 3, and I'm still going to continue to enjoy it, I imagine. we got end games coming out in March as well, so the last it's, one... It's... Oh, I have to say, I, that's the only game I really play on Xbox, is Battlefield, but... Doesn't really compare to the PC version. It does. It, I mean, no. it is incredible. Like, I mean, I am the one for PC snobbery. Well, I mean, I am now, but I like, <laughs> pretend I'm not, so I can still have friends. But yeah. I mean, it does astound me the difference between the console and PC versions of the game. I mean, <clears throat> the PC game is a technical masterpiece, in my opinion, of, of the current age. You know, it, it looks incredible. It does for what look it's incredible. Doing. I mean, you think about what they're trying to do with all those vehicles and all that destructibility without having any practice. Using I do the like the engine, engine. Frostbite. Uh, yeah, the I only issue is I think the netcode's a bit... Uh, but Well, that is true. I mean, the one problem we found was connectivity with those games. It always be possible, but... I think they've ironed out most of it now. I mean, a lot of it is going to be down to Origin and its overall improvement. Yeah, that's really. 
But uh, yeah, that's about it really. Uh, I'm just currently, I'm on that um, that wintry lull of no games to play really. Although I was thinking of picking up uh, the cave at some point. The cave. Uh, Double Fine's new game. Oh yes, yeah. Right. No, I was thinking of Cave Story Plus. That's... Oh. But um, I don't really want to pay ten pounds for it. I kind of want to get it cheaper than that. Well, I, I, I can promise you this: the Steam deal will come along. Exactly. So it's worth waiting for. So yeah, um, that's all I've been playing. Really, let's uh, let's talk about some stuff that's been going on. Did you read uh, Rocket's latest Daisy Dev post? I did. I mean, uh, there's been a few minor updates recently. We've obviously been doing some. <coughs> Interactions with the Fortran folk, getting ideas from those guys. Um, but the, are we talking the long post about outlining the, the future? Uh, I meant the one um, where he's uh, going into some of the technical details. Yeah. The most recent one, yeah. The one sort of giving the first official update on what's yeah, actually going yeah. on. Let me see if I can just get up here. Do, 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 do. Daisy Dev, there we are. So uh, let's start off just talking about the what they've done to the map. I mean, you can see that it, it already it looks from the Armour Two engine. It already looks a lot better. Oh, so much better! I mean, that's just indisputable. I mean, they've added uh, was it volumetric clouds, uh, most low of art updates, such as textures and so on, lighting and material improvements. I mean, the actually game looks like it's in a zombie apocalypse now, and not just in some war torn Eastern European place, right? Exactly, and I think that's what's so exciting about what's going on with Daisy at the moment is mm. when it was originally developed as a mod, it was compromised because Armor 2 was not built with this idea in mind. Exactly. This game, this standalone game, is so they've got complete freedom in what they want to do. It's exactly. it's fantastic. Um, plus, um, what else have they done? Uh, the new clothing and inventory. Oh, I was, dude, I was reading that, um, stuff like your magazines for your rifles and stuff. You have to, yes. like, take care of them. Yeah, well, what like they're that. planning Everything to do Everything has, like, durability and stuff. Is they're planning to have attachments as their individual items. So you have your, your magazines, your scans, your silences, your scopes. Um, so when you equip a weapon, you equip a scope, a magazine, a silencer, as you would in real life to have, mm. you know, a fully functioning gun. You have the frame, and then you have all the accessories yeah. to go with it. And I think that's make, one thing uh, that's missing in Daisy was you know you find a gun, you just find a gun, gun yeah. scope, and it's like why why can't I keep the scope? You know why can't I mix and match? Not only that, but just sort of finding heavy firepower, just casually. Exactly. I mean, a lot of the loot. Hopefully, will be a bit more authentic to the feel of the game. Should and make it a lot more tense in uh, early game as well. Oh, definitely. And you know, the two things I'm most personally excited for is the zombies. I want to see what they're going to do with these zombies. They're talking a lot about making them scarier, making them more dangerous. You know, and I think that will really change the balance of the game. At the moment, well, for you one, know not exactly how to deal with zombies. Having some different zombie skins would be nice. Yeah, definitely. And even different zombie types. I've seen Reddit posts about having fast zombies, slow zombies, you know. I'd, but I would be really happy if they made them walkers and not and take away the running. Unless they can do the running where it's not so frickin' jerky. Well, I think it'd be interesting to have different types. So you come across a group of zombies, and you know you don't know what to do. You, you know, if you've got a set of zombies that you always know how they're going to behave, it mm. takes away the, the the fear factor. But if you go into a you know settlement not knowing what you're going to encounter, maybe it's going to be fast moving zombies, or maybe it's going to be really slow ones. We're going to gang up on you. You know, I think that really puts some of the excitement back in the game. But what I think is interestingly going to be the most exciting new feature is this idea of the way the loot will spawn. Now, you go into a building and there's... Now, once you know where the stuff spawns, you know which buildings to make a beeline for, and you know what to do and what not to do. And you know exactly what parts of that building that loot yeah. is going to spawn in. Whereas now, what well, they're talking about is putting cans on shelves and under beds and stuff, so instead of going to you find the loot piles... You know, instead of meta gaming as we are now, what you do is you just think, "Well, where would shit be in this building I'm in?" and you know, scavenge properly. And that's going to be really exciting. That's going to sort of you, know, you really feel like you're in The Walking Dead or something when you're doing that. 
I actually think that all this um, all this extra risk I'm going to say uh, from having all these having to find all these extra items to survive and all that is actually going to encourage more teamwork and less PvP banditry because at the especially in the early game people just aren't going to have the equipment to take down each other let alone zombies right well in theory well yeah that is in theory of course I could be completely wrong here but this is just I know, mean thinking. what I think the problem with the PvP now is that there's no there's no balance to it either it happens entirely or it doesn't there's no yeah. moment where you hold someone hostage it's just either we're shooting at each other or we're not you know it's, yeah. it's that simple but what I think is really interesting is if there's you know you've only got a few bullets you've got to wait for the right moment so there's an awkward sort of tension it's not this COD style just sort of shootout so it would be a literal sort of few bullets each and stuff and it'd mm. make for much more interesting stories and actually you know I I don't think a lack of teamwork is the problem I think a lack of organise of, of of interaction is a problem like it'd be mm. really interesting to see small groups it's easy to work as a team with your friends yeah, it's about yeah. creating contact between people you don't know, isn't it? Definitely, and I think it'd be interesting because at the moment we do you do see a bit of cooperation amongst people, especially on private hives. But what yeah. you don't really see is bandits sort of grouping together and marking out territories, sort of like making a really persistent universe, like a sort of mafia-controlled city where you've got the underworld owning different districts, but they're not. Yeah, yeah. You know, that'd be that'd be really interesting, I think, to see. I wonder if the controls are going to get overhauled as well, or it will just be the same armor type shindig. Well, I mean, I'd be really surprised if they changed it too much. You know, it's already hmm. an essential core to the game. Everyone plays Daisy and expects that difficult. No, I mean like uh, uh, what am I trying to say? Like, for example, you know when you you press V and you do some weird ass vault. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Stuff like that. I think they should iron out. I think they'll definitely iron stuff like that out. Mm. I mean, people have been making custom animations, models. Oh yeah. You see. Did you see that really weird jumping animation? I did, and you know, it looked a bit funky, but I could really see what he was getting at. And yeah, absolutely. Like, if that's what one guy's just pulling together by himself, a full team of VI could really, um, VI Studios could really put together something nice. I think and. You know, <clears throat> Rocket has already shown over and over again that he is more than willing to be involved with the modding community and the community in general. Oh yeah, absolutely. And um, great that those uh, armor devs got released because oh, they're that, working on it as that's well. That's just fantastic they? news. I mean, sucks that it couldn't have happened before Christmas. I think that's that must have been really difficult for their families. Yeah. But uh, you know, it's the fact that they're back. Out of that, they're off. They're uh, out. Sorry, rather. Yeah, I mean, you know. I'm sure everyone's hit right in the field seeing those pictures of them reuniting with their families. It was uh, it's good. It's a beautiful good. moment. I'm glad that we're starting to get these updates as well because it's now giving a sense of like there's actually you know, progress being made and it's, it's it's pretty terrible to say, but I'm sure they're not. You know, sorry it happened. The publishers. No, no, I'm so probably they're probably really happy that they huge can... amount of publicity, yeah. huge amount of controversy. And if there's one thing that ships media, it's controversy. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, Daisy, it looks like it's coming along quite well. Yeah, uh, after so. a lot of people were getting very worried in the community, weren't they? You know, a lot of. Mm. You know, I could really see on Reddit, especially in the forums, a lot of people starting to complain about a lack of contact from Rocket. Because, you know, Rocket had said his priority was keeping in contact. And yeah. You know, not that I'm saying it's justified or whatever, I'm just saying it was the case that he did go quiet for a while, and uh, I think people were starting to doubt whether anything was happening, you know, whether this was going to be another one of these, you know, Duke Nukem Forever sort of situations. <laughs> 12 years, yeah. Well, yeah. you say that, man. Half-Life uh, Episode 3 is... Half-Life Episode 3 is... Oh, don't, don't hurt me. <laughs> the slightest, don't hurt me. It's like the, the myth of gaming. <laughs> yes. One day, man. One day. One day, somebody's going to be like, yeah, you, this Half-Life 3 is coming out, and everyone's going to be like, yeah, okay. <laughs> and, no, and they're going to release it, and no one's going to buy it, because they're just not going to believe it's actually happened. <laughs> and someone will, and then suddenly... Suddenly... Um, Oh, uh, yeah. 
only Valve can make a game that could be worth it after all this. Yeah. Uh, so, well, I think that's enough on Daisy and Great. other things. Uh, pff, what else has happened? Oh, THQ, of course, has gone. THQ, yeah, that's a huge story, really. That's probably the biggest story, I'd say, of, uh, of well, this year. Well, so this far. year so far, yeah. Wow. THQ's been around for ages. I remember yep. playing uh, Red Faction, of course, which was made by Violition, which thankfully has been picked up by another. Studio, although I'm not sure which. I'm really glad a relic got picked up by Sega. Well, you say that, but I'm not sure I, I really have faith in Sega as a company. They got the money, but I'm just glad that Relic hasn't been just left out. No one bought it because they're one of my yeah. favorite development companies. I mean, because it's happened to a few of the franchises, hasn't it? Mm. Um, but um, it's... no one bought Darksiders. Yeah, which is a shame. You know, it it's a really a much better mm. game than a lot of the stuff that comes out, you know, for an RPG, the, you know, especially even compared to Skyrim and stuff, you know, it, the combat is more enjoyable, the inventory system is more enjoyable. And, I don't know, man, I didn't play it. Well, I mean, you know, I'm not saying it's the best game I've ever played, I'm just saying that for a game that I was expecting to be in utter garbage, it was, you know. I think it had a, a nice level of polish from what I'd read about it. Yeah, well, and I just think it was just a fun experience, you know, it was nothing original or groundbreaking, it was just, you know, a good time. Mm. Um, but, but yeah, end of an era that THQ has gone now. And you know, as everyone's been saying, even if you don't like their games, you have to recognise or at least acknowledge their, their tremendous amount of impact on the industry, and they've definitely brought a lot. Yeah, it's a real shame actually. But um, you know, that, it's, it's interesting to see who bought the uh, who bought what and Road right. franchise because I thought that was going to be snapped up by a huge publisher. Yeah, that's, that's a cash cow. That's a cash cow. Oh yeah, cow absolutely. Right and uh, some unknown, well, not unknown, but someone just not as large as you thought would. Yeah, it's all the bidders we were hearing about it picked up, but uh, you know, they're still talking about there's going to be either further auctions or buyouts. I'm not really sure. The details. I know for a fact, though, that, that even though some franchises haven't been bought, that doesn't mean they're just going to drop off now. And there's still opportunities for people to, you know, pick them up or whatever. So I think we'll still see some more news in the, the coming months about this. I don't think it's over yet. Well, no, I think we're going to lose a couple more companies before it's the dust has settled. Yeah, I think. Or the end, IPs will just get shelved. We're, we're probably going to see, you know, most. IPs getting picked up of the ones that are already in development, the ones they can bring to mm. shelf fairly quickly and with not as much cost as developing a fresh engine or whatever entirely. So games like South Park. Um, I'm actually glad that that's still coming out. <laughs> yeah, dude, I'm really excited for that game. It, <laughs> yeah, me too. It's going to be really it looks, fun. It sounds silly. Like I'm sure it's going to be just ridiculously... Actually, I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful it's going to be good. It, you know Even what? if it's not great, I'm still going to enjoy it because good. I like, like South Park. It just looks like the show. Like, I think that would just be enjoyable. I just want to go on an epic quest to become Q. I just want to be a dick to people. Like, that, <laughs> that better be an option to be of course. You know, Hartman. Because mm. we all want to You're like some new kid or whatever. But yeah. Uh, so, uh, what do you... What's... What, uh, I guess it's nearly the end of January, so February's coming round. Indeed. What, uh, are you looking forward to anything in February that's coming out? Yeah, or? Firefall, in all honesty, is, was the last game I can think of I've really been waiting for. That was announced a few years ago, and they said 2011. It's only just coming out. So I've been waiting for this game for a while. My radar didn't really extend on this, so at the moment I'm kind of waiting on... Well... Oh. Obviously, the obvious one is uh, Watch Dogs. So that's that looks like it's gonna be really excellent. Well, yeah, if it comes out this gen. <clears throat> well, you know, the PR says it is, even if mm. the the hive mind seems to. Uh, I've been waiting for this for uh, February to come round. Got Colonial Marines. Oh, actually, no, I have to. I tell a lie. I'm very excited for that. And Tomb Raider, the new Tomb Raider. Oh, yeah, that too. And Dead Space 3. But I don't know if you're interested in that. Yeah, the co op. Should be fun in that. Be yeah. interesting, at least. It's got a bit action y lately, but it's still, I still like the IP and the, the uh, lore and all that, so I'm probably going to enjoy it. I think it's a really it. good horror story, isn't it? Hmm. Not scary, though, unfortunately. Uh, 
But it's the closest thing to survival horror we bloody well get these days. And survival horror has just died, really, I think. You know, yeah. when games like Silent Hill and Resi can be looking to do it, no one else was going to. I'm trying to think. Probably Amnesia was the last real closest thing, I imagine. And, and that's that, to be honest, though, though there's probably been a few more that I just haven't played or that I don't know about. I don't say that's necessarily survival horror in the sense of the genre as we know it, because no. the genre as we know it's a sort of. This is RPG grounded, whereas Amnesia wasn't yeah. so much. It was more of a, a cinematic experience, I'd say. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, yeah. Oh, and uh, Metal Gear Rising Revengeance at the end of the month as well. Yeah, I played the demo for that, man. Violence. I played the demo and it sold me on the game. You know, I, I, the, the, the trailers they released over a year ago sold me on the game. How. Why would I not want to chop that many things? Well, I've up? never been a fan of that, uh, like of games like Bayonetta or Devil May Cry, so I was very on the borderline with this one. The Metal Gear name being the only thing that remotely interested me in it at all. But having since played the demo, that uh, I'm not sure when it came out, but I only just got around to doing it recently. Um, I really enjoyed it actually, and I, I was just like, like you said before about Firefall taking you back to that fun. Yeah. I was just like, holy fuck, I'm really enjoying this. I'm having a really great time in this demo. So I played it through twice. Really? Yeah. That's when you know you got a winner. Yeah, exactly. So I stuck a pre-order on for that. Well, I think that's just an interesting point you raised, that um, what deterred you from it was its similarity to games like Death May Cry. Um, and what drew you to it was the Metal Gear name. And obviously, you know, I'm personally not a fan of the Metal Gear franchise. Um, so that was my deterrent but what drew me to it was I love the Metal Gear games uh, not the Metal Gear sorry the uh, Devil May Cry games oh okay like, yeah Devil May Cry 2 one of my favourite games did you time. get the new one? I have uh, these collector's edition cards still on my bookshelf I'll be happy to show you them friend they are pretty impressive no, I mean um, um, did you buy the new Devil May Cry that just no came out? I'm no. not really feeling that I mean I'll probably get it when it's cheap I hear the combat is good but I really really don't like the uh, the way he looks in it to be honest with you. Uh, fair enough, fair enough, fair enough. But uh, so, yeah, no, yeah. but in Metal Gear Rising Revengeance, it just looks like it's going to be a really fluid Devil May Cry. Yeah, the combat flowed pretty nice. It looks quite violent as well. Plus, like, dude, cardboard box while wearing a poncho and a sombrero. These, these. I, I'm not lying, I'm not lying, I'm not lying. You, those, are, those are things you can do. <laughs> 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 oh. Oh. It was like when I was playing Metal Gear 3 and there's that option to just stare at her boobs. I just. It's just stared all day long. Well, I did, obviously, you know, I'm not yeah, even on them. It's Eva. Who didn't? Probably, you know, White Knights or gays, maybe they weren't maybe. that interesting. <laughs> maybe. Okay, uh, yeah, so that's basically what I'm looking forward to playing this February. Hopefully. By that point, we'll have come up with a name for this. Yes, that'd thing, be good. And released a few more. So, yeah. Uh, do you have anything else to uh, finish off? Because we're reaching the about half hour mark now. No, that's that's it for me. I just uh, I rec- I think we should uh, each end on a recommendation of what, if anyone wants to buy a game, is the game you recommend they buy or get or whatever. All right, you go. You go first, man. Well, I think mine's pretty clear. It's going to be Firefall, and <laughs> I actually would even encourage sinking money into it. You know, if you've got the hundred dollars or sixty-three pounds to spare, you get a mm. motorbike in it, the Batman motorbike, and you know, do I need to tell more about that? <laughs> Fair enough, man. Fair enough. I'm going to say uh, I played it a little while ago now, but. Yeah. Um, I would have to say Hitman Absolution. Yeah, I, I, I definitely support that choice. I recommend that. A really awesome game. One of game. the better releases of this, uh, sorry, of the end of 2012, rather. Oh, yeah, definitely. And, it, and if you have a good, if you get it on PC, get it on PC, because that if thing got has some PC nice, right. nice textures. <laughs> My God. It's one of the best looking games. I mean, the year. benchmark alone is a good time. Yeah, the benchmark test alone, and they even give you a little achievement for that. A little cheeky achievement, so, so that's, that's, worth that's pro tip. Exactly. So, um, oh, I guess we never introduced ourselves at all. No. 
Oh, we, do you want to go real names, or do you want to go, uh... Well, I guess we uh, just go with names. our aliases. Our aliases. Yeah. Okay. Okay, well, I'm Anticism1. And I am Zero Shot. You're Zero Shot. This has been To Be Filled In podcast. <laughs> <laughs> we hope you enjoyed it, and um, we should uh, get out weekly releases, I suppose. Oh, we will. We'll oh, be we back. Will. We'll be back. We'll be back. All right. Fairly well. Fairly well.